Welcome to another beautiful day and another day of Dose of Did You Know, where intriguing, inspiring, unique individuals come to talk love and life and how it has brought them to where they are in this moment today. And I got a special birthday boy with me today, Mr. Adam Grant. Happy birthday. Hey, hey, thank you. Thank you. I kind of feel it today now. (laughs) Yeah, right. Did you? going to forget because we had all this conversation beforehand, but I never said happy birthday. Did you think I was going to forget your birthday? You, you know, if anyone would forget, it would be me, honestly. I'm, <laughs> I'm terrible on birthdays, especially my own. So. <laughs> but, you know, February February the 9th, it, always, it sneaks up on me. It's just, you go through what, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then New Year's, and bam, and it's, I don't know, I get lost in it. You get lost between New Year's and Valentine's Day. That must say something about you. If you like, right? Some like, you got some aura, (laughs) some funkiness going on. I don't know. You got some spunk in there. (laughs) Well, you know, it's funny. uh, And I don't know why this is, but it seems like every time I've ever gone to Nashville to record or whatever reason I'm there, it's ended up being around my birthday that the very first time I ever recorded in Nashville was 2007. And, uh, we went up there and recorded a whole album. It was my first, first time, you know, recording in in Nashville. And that, that was right around my birthday. And one of the guys in the band of bad horse, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep my camera straight. He, uh, his birthday was February 28th. So it was kind of like a birthday week, or weekend, whatever you want to call it in Nashville, we'd always go and have a good time. But yeah, it's almost like every, every time I'm in Nashville, the last album I recorded was in March, which was close, you know, in quite February, but, but anyway, it's that time of year. It's usually really cold up there too. So yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And we have another special kind of February birthday thing going on. But before we get going, tell the world a little bit about who you are. Like who's Adam Grant? Why, why are you here? Why are you here oh. on earth, Adam? Mysterious, mysterious. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just, uh, I'm definitely country. There's no, no doubt about that. I, I'm not going to deny that fact, but I'm a country singer songwriter. Uh, honestly, the, the very truth of it all, I, ne- I never set out to be a singer. I really didn't. I was actually shy to sing and, wasn't real fond of the idea but i loved writing country songs and uh that's how i started i just i I was like i remember the day because i really back when i was really young i actually liked a lot of rock music too but i started playing drums first and then went to guitar and that's what i stuck with but Mm -hmm. i remember you know asking myself how do you write how do you write a country song and uh that's what I started doing, and and I just I loved it. So that was my thing was writing country songs, country music, and um, it just turned out that you know if it's kind of like if you're a race car uh, mechanic and you built engines, you don't really have someone to drive them. You're, you're test driving it, and that's kind of how I was doing the music. I'd write these songs. I didn't have anybody to sing them, so I started singing, and then yeah. eventually people were like, "Man, you should you should sing." And, and I was like, I don't know about that, but I, I kind of just stuck with it, kept, you know, kept writing and kept yeah. singing. And eventually, I don't know, I just became a singer. <laughs> so so that, and that's what that, I do now. I, I, uh, I write. Yeah, that's the kind of guy I like. What's that? You know, I'm sorry. you don't around and wait for somebody to do it or to be like, oh, I have these all these songs, but I've got no one to sing them. You just kind of picked it up and did it. And we're like, well, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's got to get done. I'm going to do it. Yeah. So what is your, there's oh, a yeah, little and, delay. And, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's a little delay. So go ahead. I'll be, I'll be patient with my, my comments. Yeah. Well, I was just saying, um, I, I actually got to where I enjoyed singing, but I still, I still cringe sometimes hearing myself and 
but there's the, lately I've gotten like my new my most recent album. Uh, I'm I'm pretty, I guess, content. You know, I like I like how my voice turned out on those. But when I listen to my songs, I'm listening to the song. You know, um, yeah. But yeah, I I think I've got I've gotten more comfortable definitely through the years singing now. So yeah, I noticed a, a delay, so I'll wait on you as well. Patience. Patience is something that I have to work really hard on. So right now I'm working on my patience of like not like butting in and interrupting. But I want to know when you listen to a song, oh, right? When I listen to the song, I, it's like how it makes me feel. And if it makes me want to like move and dance, because I, I was a ballerina, so probably that's my natural thing to do. I'm not a singer. If it makes me want to sing, watch yourself hold your ears and then let me sing it but when you hear yourself do you listen to like the vocals and then you go back and you listen to the actual instrumental or is it how it sounds all together because you're coming at it from two different you know two different sides uh i would say when i first listened to it after we've recorded it and i'm listening to whether it's the the rough cut of it or after it's actually mixed, the final mix, I usually listen to everything, and then I really focus on my voice because I'm I'm very I'm a hard critic. <laughs> I'll sit there and critique myself till I have no skin left, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah. The, later, like now, if I put the CD in, I'm riding down the road. That's that's usually the only time I ever listen to my own music is when I'm driving. But uh, I'll really listen to my voice and I'm like, oh, why did I do that? Or sometimes I'm happy. I'll say, oh, that man, how did I how did I do that? You know what I mean? But usually more times I'm I'm listening going, oh, man, I sh I should have done. I could have done that better. And I didn't, you know, but that's everybody. I've I remember hearing Kenny Chesney. He would do the same things. He's really hard on himself when he listens to his vocals. And I'm I'm sure a lot of a lot of singers are that way as well. Yeah, it makes me think, what makes you because I feel like when I'm listening to you, you feel like out of your like you're writing and playing and you're singing, you would say your weakest kind of part is the singing like that's the one that you're not maybe weaker you're not as confident in and you're you're building on on that so what made it what is it in you that said even though I feel this way I'm going to go ahead and do it because so many of us feel that way like we'll have something that we're really good at so we'll we have no problem doing it but then there's that weaker side of us that we're like oh I don't want to put myself out there. So we don't. And then we don't really live into like our dreams and our purpose. So what is it inside you besides having a birthday in February that makes you like take that leap of faith? <laughs> well, uh, I would say with me, it's mainly that I just can't seem to get away from it. Even if I wanted to like, uh, there's been times I would get frustrated with music and I'd be like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm just going to focus on other things and enjoy life and not worry about it. And then a few weeks ago by, and there I go again, I'd pick up the guitar and start writing again or singing again or playing a club or something. But I know that the first leap, I mean, I've never been skydiving and don't really have the desire to. But I can imagine that first leap out of the plane is just like going out on stage the first time because it's like, man, am I going to, is my parachute going to open? <laughs> you know, am I actually going to survive this? And, you know, for a singer or any performer, the worst thing, especially with me, is forgetting the words. And it's funny because you'd think that since you write the songs, you would be less likely to forget the words. But what I found, I know this is crazy, but when you're writing a song, at least for me, as you're writing, you have so many avenues of lyrics in your, in your mind mm -hmm. and you may have written it one way and then you made a change and all this. Well, when you're performing live, all that's still in your head. 
So when you go to sing that song, you're like, oh, which lyric did I choose? Which one is right? Was it this one? So all that's happening in your brain. Now, if I go and sing a George Strait song or Garth Brooks or whatever, uh, I learned it as it is and no other way. So it's it's a lot of times simpler to remember those lyrics because you only learned it one way and you didn't sit there and write it all these different avenues. That's just how I, I, I find it to be. But yeah, I, dying on stage, forgetting the words. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> has that ever happened when you're like, you're going and you sing another version and you're just like, well, no one's going to know but me. And you just kind of keep going or like, has that ever happened? Because I can totally see that happening to me and just being like, oh, well, you just got to go with it. Yeah. I've, I think I've mastered mistakes. I swear. I swear. It's just, it's just like I've gotten really good at screwing up. <laughs> so uh, there's been times where I've completely died, where it was just like, you know what? I just had to stop the song. And that is the worst feeling you'll ever experience because it's because the people, they kind of die with you when you do that. You can see it in their faces. and They're like, oh, my God, I'd hate to be him right now. But you just you say, hey, you know what? I'm human. I'm not. A, I'm not a robot. You just fight through it. Yeah. Okay. So I. I don't know. I, I think you're kind of brave. Like really brave to go up, do that, have those things happen, and then just be like, you know what? I'm going to produce another. I'm going to write another album, and I'm going to record another album, and I'm going to do all this. That is really. How, what we all, I think what we all strive for is really living like out our passion, no matter how scary it is. Cause don't you feel those scary moments and those gut wrenching ones where you're like, Oh my gosh, make the successes so much like bigger and grander. Well, it's funny. Cause uh, a few guys in, in my band, you know, I, I started with the band Bad Horse. We had a, a six person group and uh, a few of them loved performing live and performing live. I do enjoy it. But my true love is being in the studio because I love the creation of music to me to be able to take a uh, and I hope I don't get off topic. I'm just I'm just thinking. But to be able to take lyrics and melody out of thin air because that's really what's happening you you either you have a musical thought or you don't you know so you're grabbing this stuff out of thin air and you're creating music and to me in the studio you're with these masterminds man some of these session players and producers and engineers that to me is just it's uh that is the beauty to me of music i love the studio work. I like hanging out with these guys and look or experiencing everyone's different ideas. Cause the, I'm telling you, these guys have musical ideas. It's just unbelievable. You get in the studio mm-hmm. and, and they'll say, Hey man, how, how about we do this on this bar? And we, we change this up and put a stop here. I know it's all musical terminology, but when they do this, like, wow, I, you know, man. So, That, to me, is the magic behind the music. Now, performing live is a different type of magic. Don't get me wrong. That's great, and that's where the people get to enjoy it. But my my true love is definitely in the studio. I love it. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I've ever heard that. You must have, like, a mathematical side to your brain. You know, like an engineering side to it. So you have this creative side, but also this this engineering side because that's what it sounds like you're you're like this good combination of that normally people are one way especially when they're um like uber creative right when they're singers or artists or writers they'll have like a very strong artistic side and then a weaker you know like that mathematical engineering kind of side but i feel like you have a good balance between the two of you I hope. I don't know. I, I won't claim either, but I, I try. <laughs> my my saying is I struggle, but somehow 
I, I don't know. Somehow I pull it off every now and then get lucky. <laughs> yeah, you pull it off a little bit. You, you've got some um, cred behind your back, you know, that you, you, you've done some stuff to say that you have pulled it off a bit. And I'm super excited because we were just talking about this Friday. I'm going to be in um, Columbia. Close to Nashville. I say Nashville because no one knows where Columbia is. But Or at least if you're not from that area, you don't know where Columbia is. But we're going to put the boondocks in Columbia, which is outside of Nashville, on Friday for Hearts of Warriors. And at first, you weren't going to be able to make it. And I'm so glad that your schedule changed up and now you are able to make it. So I'll get to see. I'll be blessed with your voice for one or two songs that night. Do you line dance? Side note, I got to squirrel there for a minute. Do you line dance? I'm a good watcher. I'll sit by and watch all of it. <laughs> well, not to make you not show up and stand up the event, but it will happen. And you're going to have to come out there. Travis, he's watching. He's going to do it. Um, I don't think he would say he is a line dancer by nature. I'm definitely not a line dancer by nature. I might fall down. I don't know. It could be very comical. See? So you can just join. I, I have this way of like forcing people to do things. So put your dancing shoes on, okay? Yeah. That's right. It, it might might require beer. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll buy your beer. Oh, that's I'll funny. Buy your beer. Oh, you know, my good... <laughs> you know, my, my good good friend is uh, the one that owns Boondocks, Woody. He's. I've known Woody for a long time. We we would hunt together. Oh yeah, Woody, man, you'll never meet a better guy. Seriously. Oh, I agree with you one hundred percent. From the time I met them, they are just like pure soul, rock of the earth. Like they're just good people, and that's why you know Travis and I come back so many times and do these events and MC and and put you know Michelle, of course coordinates it all michelle baxter ura michelle baxter but so adam come with your dancing shoes on come with your singing voice on i will buy you a beer to persuade you into line dancing with us it'll be a thing i tell you what now that you mentioned that you reminded me of something um our first album i wrote a song called honky tonk dancing fool and it's a killer line dancing song I got I actually I got several that are that way. One's called Get Down on Friday Night. Uh, another the one on my recent album was Women Whiskey and Drinking. And it's Ooh. very Garthish. If you listen to it, it sounds just like something Garth would sing. But yeah, Women Whiskey and Drinking, you can look that up. And the best way to hear my music is on a site. You can type in here now, just like here, here now dot com, Adam Grant. Here now, or how does it go? Here now, Adam Grant dot com, something like that. Yeah. But it has my whole new album on it. But the song to check out is uh, "Honky Tonk Dancing Fool." It's a it's a comical country song, and it's it's made made for for line dancing. Is this your way of getting out of line dancing? That you're going to sing the song and make us all line dance? Is this your tricky way? Are you using your like mathematical so you, side to trick me? So you got me all figured out. So I I, I give up. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. I'm. I mean, I could probably. I. I guess I. I would say I could dance, but I've never actually line dance. And I'm. Now I'm country. I. You know, I'm all all the time in the woods hunting and everything you could imagine. But uh, I've never gotten into line dancing. Well, everybody, you heard it here. He's going to line dance with Travis and I Friday. It's happening. It's a thing. And if he doesn't show up for the event, you know, I scared the crap out of him and he's like i am not going near that woman she's gonna make me do things that make me uncomfortable hey i'll probably look more like i'm river dancing than than line dancing <laughs> <laughs> okay now i'm really excited about it so everybody if you're around in the columbia area the nashville area in tennessee take a little drive over to the boom docks friday night it starts around six o'clock i will be there my main squeeze travis will be there adam grant will be there performing a couple songs for us we'll be dancing it's going to be a great event to 
to support veteran musicians. That's why we're here. And it's a good date night, right? Valentine's is Sunday. Have a little fun with everybody on Friday night and then go be romantic with just, you know, whoever on Sundays. It'll be a fun-filled weekend. Like you have fun-filled uh, birthday weeks and months, right? I do that too. It'll be a fun-filled Valentine's weekend. Yep. And expensive dinners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right. So before I let you go, Adam, and I see you just in a few short days. Oh, do you bow hunt? Or shoot? I do. Yep. Okay. Yeah, wow. I'm, I'm uh, I like all of it, every bit of it. Well, that Friday I bought morning. A, a, a I'm, I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm cutting you off. We're cutting each other off. Go ahead. You go. Tell me. I was just saying, I recently bought a farm. It's a, it's a 142 acre farm. Basically, I call it a deer farm. It's I don't really farm deer, but I have a lot of, a lot of wildlife on and um, I'm always raising raising my deer and you know people give hunters a hard time a lot of times because they hunt and they don't like the fact that they kill animals but you know I'm into conservation and I, I know the truth behind it and the good that it actually does and it's funny because I'll, I'll make little videos while I'm out feeding my deer I'll put out tons of corn and you know all this special treats for them and I always say this is what I'm doing for my deer. What have you done for your deer lately? You know, and that's where you get them because they complain, but what are they actually doing for them? You know, I'm, I'm out here. Actually, I take care of them and, and I guarantee you, they like me. <laughs> so They like to hear my four wheeler coming. So that's, that's for sure. Yeah. It's the circle of life. Remind me Friday, I'm going to connect you with Byron Davis. Who is going to be there? He's a veteran. He is um, started Dogs of War Outdoors. So anyways, I got to connect you. I'm saying that out loud so we both don't forget that. Um, but the point I brought up was Friday morning, um, we're going to be doing some shooting, some bow shooting at a, v a local VFW. So I'll just send you the deets, the details. And if you can make it, oh. cool. If not, we'll just see you Friday night. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be driving up Friday from Atlanta uh, and I should get there before six, hopefully, <laughs> of course, because it starts at six. But, uh, yeah. And um, so I've, I'm going to be for, actually from now till then, I'm going to be working on some some music, picking out which songs I'm going to play. I really don't know the time frame I need to cover, but I'm going to prepare for whatever, you know. That's right. Be prepared so you can show up and do whatever you want. So before I let you go, Adam, and I see you in a short few days, I'm going to ask you my last question. I ask everybody, answer it with the first thing that comes to your mind. You don't even have to explain it to me. Just vomit out what is on your heart when you hear this question, okay? That could be dangerous. That could be dangerous. All right, go ahead. I'm ready for it. In this moment right now, <laughs> Mr. Adam Grant, what does love mean to you? Well, it means everything. Well, the first thing that comes to mind, everything that you do love, everything that matters, everything that's meaningful in your life, uh, whether it's your family, your friends, the, uh, the outdoors, music. It's just, to me, it's everything meaningful, you know? So whatever that may be that's in your life that's meaningful, that's what love means. And it's um, a very important thing. I agree with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait to meet you in person. And to everybody else out there that is watching, remember, as always, love hard, love pure, and love proactive. Until next time, we will see you later. Bye-bye. All right, see ya.